Ted Wilson stated when visiting in Jamaica that we do urge that lawmakers give strong adherence and cognizance to the sanctity of life. Most Adventists would be very supportive of the sanctity of life and not in favor of abortion unless the mother's life was in danger or there was incest or rape involved. And that's left to the individual to decide. You know, Pastor Ted Wilson just declared, as the General Conference has been allowing since the 1970s in their hospitals, that torturing and then killing an infant in the womb of its mother is perfectly acceptable if that baby was conceived by rape or incest. And so I ask, what did the innocent child do to warrant his or her murder? Why does a child end up on death road without so much as a trial simply because the Lord thy God allowed the child to be conceived in the womb of a woman raped? Is Ted Wilson saying the God of the Bible made a mistake? Sadly, yeah. It's exactly what he's doing here. Because it was the Creator God that sent the light of life into that fertilized egg at the very moment of conception. It says in John chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, that all things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And so I implore all those interested to see these videos I made that proved, using modern-day science, that light actually appears at the very moment of conception, confirming John chapter 1 here, and further proving Ted Wilson to be a man who mocks the Creator God and his written word. But because Ted Wilson and the General Conference have clearly joined with Rome, as the many videos I have posted confirm, he has been desensitized to join those wherein the love of many will wax cold. That beautiful little baby that the Creator God allowed the gift of life is so hated that many demand its death simply for coming to life without so much as committing a single crime. Everything from an inconvenient pregnancy to simply not wanting stretch marks has become the excuse to kill these precious little babies the world over. Worse yet, it's one thing for the state to unbiblically kill criminals, but the way babies are murdered by these doctors is abject horror and torture beyond anyone's imagination that can only be described as an emulation of the Vatican's torturous inquisition. And so I ask, has Ted Wilson forgotten Deuteronomy 24, 16 that declares the fathers shall not be put to death for their children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers? Because that's what's happening here. It says every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Or what about Ezekiel 18.20 that says the soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. But Ted Wilson says otherwise. Or what of Romans chapter 12 verse 17 that says we must recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Yet Ted Wilson says if a woman is violently raped, we must use that same violence to kill her innocent child. Uh, yes, it appears Ted Wilson has forgotten these amazing Bible verses so as to embrace political correctness. But then this is to be expected when the Church of Rome, that now controls the Seventh-day Adventist Church, has moved them to deny this doctrine ever since declaring their original sin dogma, which, as I declared in this video, has been openly and clearly embraced by the Seventh-day Adventist Church leaders since the 1980s. Sadly, because the baby can't tell us about all the pain it goes through when its little arms and little legs were being viciously ripped from its little body while still being alive and fully alert without any painkillers whatsoever, which, by the way, has been recorded by some wherein they show the baby actually trying to escape the forceps of its killer, proving it knows it's in danger. And it even opens its little mouth in a silent scream when they shred it to pieces. But because the child has no voice, or even the chance to make an appeal in court as a mass murderer can, these loveless leaders in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and the anti-Christian U.S. government see nothing wrong here, and so the killing continues. But think about this, Mr. and Mrs. Seventh-day Adventist Church member. Ted Wilson is a supposed man of God who openly declares it is okay to torture and kill little babies simply because the pregnancy came about by the criminal act of the father, 
thereby denying scripture. But what he won't say is that life of that little child truly came by the will of God who gave life to that baby in the first place, regardless of how the baby was conceived. But when love is no longer in the heart, the God of love is removed from the equation. This hellish act, more than any other apostate action performed on a daily basis in the Seventh-day Adventist Church by all its government-approved agents of the state, is without a doubt the most evil fruit of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to date. But it is also absolute evidence that the bloodthirsty man of sin in Rome is in fact the long-prophesied puppeteer of every single pastor in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And common sense dictates this as fact because none of these pastors have stepped out of their 501c3 contract with the second beast of Revelation. They haven't even come out of the prophesied fallen apostate SDA church to declare the truth about its hellish fruit. They worship the money that they get as a paycheck from the general conference over and above the God of heaven. And so they're going to stand firm inside the church and teach others should stay in as well so as to vindicate their sinful act. These pastors are now all in concert with Ted Wilson, who is advocating the church-sanctioned and legalized breaking of commandment number six so as to desensitize the nation even further into accepting death as the norm so as to garner even more souls as Satan's troops for Armageddon, who will then surround those of us that do see this as open sin and a blatant mockery of the Creator God. With that all being said, What shocks me the most is how some who claim to be obedient children of God still sit in the pew of this apostate SDA church. But I praise the Lord, as prophesied in Revelation 18, verses 1 to 5, that many will not remain seated for long. In fact, they have been coming out of this fallen church for decades and will do so to join with the remnant of her seed, to finish the work prophesied to be done in these very last days. Thank you for watching. God bless. 